All right, well, welcome back to the channel. My name is Kevin. I'm Tarsha. And this is, of course, Conversations with the Crawleys, where we have conversations about faith, family, relationships, and recaps, reviews, commentary on some of our favorite TV shows. This one is all about the latest episode of Ready to Love DC slash Potomac Edition. So because we know that this is content that you enjoy, we know you're going to do the following, right? <laughs> you're going to hit that subscribe button. You're going to hit the like. You're going to request notifications. And you're going to share. And then we will see you, hang out with you, meet you in the comments. All right. So again, just a big shout out to all of the KT squad for uh, holding it down for your prayers and, and comments and thoughts as we were kind of recovering from COVID. We're pretty much all good now. 95% good. <laughs> She's 95. I'm probably like 99.5%. Still got a small cough every now and then, but other than that, we're good. So we appreciate it. And so we're back here doing these reviews. All right. So we're near the end of this season of Ready Love. And I hear that there's a Miami edition brewing, which that's oh, going to be, be interesting. interesting. Yeah. That's going to be real interesting. Florida Ridians. <laughs> Florida already got enough issues. So yeah, <laughs> we pray for Tommy as he goes down there. All right. But uh, we're near the end where... Um, they just finished review we didn't do, but we they just finished kind of their retreat. Mm -hmm. uh, Tina is a no show again, even when Tommy tried to meet with her. Yeah, I I don't know what's going on with this season they're in the DC area. They're just not showing up, or they're like I'm out and not letting you know Tommy or production know right. that they're finished. Right, because in previous season, like last season. It was just this whole run of people like, I got to meet with Tommy. Tommy, I'm going to have to excuse myself. It was like, okay, cool. There's the closure, all right. of that. This season, everybody's like, they making these decisions and not mentioning anything. I'm like, ain't um, nobody here for me. Bye. Who is it? Ace was like, she told uh, Tori. Yeah. And didn't mention anything to Tori to was like, Tommy. oh, by the way, Ace said she ain't coming back. <laughs> He's like, what? Yeah. So <laughs> Tina, she didn't even show up for her final meeting with uh, Tommy. So... All right, um, so we're kind of really we're, we're things are, are down to the end, right? Um, but then Donovan and Sabrina, who they were kind of in each other's tops, top one or two, whatever. Well, yeah, because Sabrina had a list, and so at the brunch, you know, that's where Tommy was kind of convened, seeing how the retreat went. Yes, and Donovan was like, well. She kind of bit my head off. Right. Sabrina was pretty much telling me that she can get me cut anytime she want. And Sabrina's like, what are you talking about? So it's just like, what happened? Like I could kind of see. Yeah, because He basically was like, she was like, well, you can get gone too. So I could kind of see her saying that. I don't know what happened. I, I just know she spent a lot of time with. Demetrius mm -hmm. on the trip. Right. And he spent time with Carmen. Yeah. And I know they had a conversation. And I know she was bringing up good points about how long he's been out of his, his marriage, right. meaning like fully divorced. But I guess what he was getting at was that they were separated yeah. and that he was probably had moved on a lot before the papers were dry. Yeah. So, but she had her red flags. Mm hmm. Obviously. So they had their meeting. They kind of kick off the episode. They have a meeting. Um, and she talks about how she feels like she, her character was attacked by what he was saying at the brunch uh, with Tommy and in front of everybody else. Um, and he took offense at her saying that he wasn't ready to love. Right. Um, so he's like, you know, in, in one of his insights, he also is like, she hasn't been consistent. Right. She hasn't been really talking to me. Right. Especially since the retreat, we haven't talked. So he's like... You got all these dudes and you might as well just go ahead and let me go because we are really not interacting right. to make a good connection yeah. in his mind while she's still putting out there, oh, I'm still deciding. Right. And he's like, what you deciding? You ain't even calling me to make a decision. So I think, it, but because what I got from it was that he was like, look, when I'm with you, I'm with you. When I'm with Carmen, I'm with Carmen. You're not really, basically what I think he was saying was that you're not really present even when you're around me. It's mm. kind of like you're putting all your attention over there. Mm. So there's not even the consistency of you, you're you engaged with me when, when we're connecting. Gotcha. Right? Um, she she calls him a bitter baby. I mean, it was just, it was ugly. Oh, and, you know, he was talking and then he was like, I guess I'll allow you to talk. 
But in the meantime, I mean, she was kind of insulting him, like, you know, his his nails all dirty. And yeah. I was like, what what that has to do with understanding his feelings and yeah. where he's coming from? Mm-hmm. So I was just like, I was a little put off by how Sabrina was responding. Yeah. And not was, validating some of his concerns. It was just a bad situation all around. I mean, she, because he, he, he's also like, uh, she became distant when his relationship with Carmen became to, became a little more stronger. noticeable, stronger, what have you. Yeah. Um, so it just, needless to say, their their connection is done. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I can't see how she can be mad at, be upset about his connection with Carmen because she's doing the same thing. She did the same thing to Tori. She's doing the same thing to him. She's doing the same thing to, to Dimitri. So, so, yeah. All right. Interesting. So on the other side of the Potomac, uh, Paul and Dakia meet. Right. right. Um, and it's a, it's a, a growing relationship, right? I don't think she's interested in him. <laughs> I just go throw it. I think they make good friends mm-hmm. and there's no chemistry with them. I mean, I get that you want to pursue something, but she even has the question, you know, is, are we forcing this? Right. You know, obviously they have a good conversation because they're intelligent people that find interests, right. right? But I don't think there's anything romantically spark wise that I can see. Right. We'll see. Cause it's I mean it's it's a relationship that came very late in the process. Mm-hmm. Even by their own account. Sure. Um, they didn't really have a date until very late in the process, mm-hmm. right? So it's kind of like they've had great talks, great conversations. <laughs> But yeah, like you're saying, the question is, is there a spark there? Right. Because when she talked about the other two, right, mm-hmm. the, I forgot the chef's name. Eric. Eric. There was something different when she spoke of him. Right. Clifton, same thing. There's something different there. Right. But I just see a lot of hesitation when it comes to. Yeah. Um, Paul. Paul. So. Now she did, uh, excuse me, Paul did kind of bring clarification because last week, um, basically Carmen was trying to drop all the shade she could, um, basically saying, she basically was kind of saying that, uh, Paul had mentioned that he wasn't really physically attracted to, mm-hmm. uh, the kid. Mm-hmm. Um, and Paul's like, let me bring some clarity to that. Mm-hmm. He's like, yes. Oh, do you want to find someone who I'm attracted to? Da, da, da. Mm-hmm. It's like, but I didn't mention you or anything. He's like, I'm a, when I'm with Carmen, it has nothing to do with you and you have nothing to do with her. Mm-hmm. He's trying to keep those separate, which definitely that's, that's, that's how it should be done, right? Um, and then the Kia brings out, she's like, look, there is a difference between natural and plastic. There's some that's, she, I think the thing when she said, there's some that's uh, gotten in the gym and shaped by God. And then there's those that are shaped on the table. Right. So, um, and he does, he, you know, she does kind of ask, okay, where are we at? now um and he's like because she's asking where are we at between takia and carmen and Mm -hmm. he says carmen superficial he's kind of not into her right now Mm -hmm. um so he says he needs a takia in his life Mm -hmm. so we'll see he does ask her to meet his family right uh because that's the assignment that the guys have this week is that they're supposed to meet the family Mm -hmm. um and so she's a little like eh, are we there yeah but again it's more about in this process, it's more about you finding out about the person. Right. It's not saying that you're solidifying your relationship. Right. This isn't a marriage proposal. Right. Or even that you're seriously dating yet. Right. It's like, are we going to get to the point where I can see myself dating you right. seriously? Right. And so, you know, even I get the apprehension, but mm-hmm. at the same time, I think it's important in the process to say, you know what, let me see if I can find out another, another deeper side of you. Right. So she agrees to go, oh, yeah. you know, so she's cool with it. Yeah. Um, and then Donovan and Meat brings Carmen to meet his mom. Right. Um, and his mom and Carmen kind of bond over the fact that they are, they both ra- are, well, Carmen currently and Donovan's mom in the past raised sons as single parents. Correct. So they kind of bond over that. Correct. Um, seems like a good, you know, at least the mom. A little great interaction. Yes. You know, they're talking and spending time, you know, just kind of getting to know each other. And so Donovan's a little surprised that the mom really takes to Carmen. Right. 
And, you know, the mom shares, you know, what she felt about what she saw about Carmen being, you know, mm -hmm. boss lady, you know, know what she want and right. everything like that. And that's probably someone he needs in his life at this time. Right. So, you know, he pretty got the green light from mom if right. he wants to continue. So. Right. All right. Um, and then Sabrina and Demetrius have a conversation. Right. Because it's like Sabrina has to kind of like, there's always this cleanup with her. And yeah. this extra communication that is needed, right? So they meet. And she does express some of her concerns at this stage, not a whole lot, because there's still the conversation of uh, submissive, right? Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that, that she considers a, a kind of a flag for her mm -hmm. is her friend, uh, his friend saying, the deacon's friend saying that, um, you know, he wants a submissive woman. Right. And so I think that there's, you have to, with that conversation, you have to get an understanding of what does it mean to be submissive? Because many times we hear that word and we think, you know, you, you know, the barking woman from coming to America. Right. That's not necessarily, I think, what, what it's supposed to be or how it can be, you know. No, put. not at all. And I think Sabrina, I feel sometimes like she's trying to, overly uh insert that she has to be dominant right and i don't think that's necessary you know um dimitri's like no i feel like there is a partnership there is a say so everyone has because she brings up about um the last name right and he was like i would love my wife to carry my last name mm -hmm. and she's like well why is that necessary right you know, and, you know, them having to talk through if, if they got that far, you know, about the last name situation. Right. But if you feeling like you, that you have to be dominant as a woman in some way where it's more outside mm -hmm. and not something as your character is. I think it could be very disdaining to a man mm -hmm. where it's more like, okay, you have to show me that you are in control of everything instead of it being more of a partnership. Right. And I think that's why she's feeling that dynamics of, of power. I, so it's, it's almost like it's a need for identity mm, mm. is what I kind of get mm. because, um, and not to, you know, everyone had, when, I, when I've heard this conversation before, as far as women taking the last name of their husband or their spouse, um, it's not, I'm not putting it as a blanket statement, but mm -hmm. just from some of the things that she's saying, mm -hmm. it almost sounds like it's an identity thing for her, mm -hmm. that she's afraid of losing her, not giving up her identity, or she wants to maintain her identity, mm -hmm. which I definitely get. I, you know, everyone wants to have their identity, but there's a way to do that and still form a partnership. Oh yeah, definitely so. So that's just kind of, I think, because she mentioned that she kept her, her last name in her previous relationship. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm wondering, you know, kind of what all of the factors were with that, um, mm -hmm. regarding that previous situation. So we'll see. We, we'll see. But at the end of the day, mm -hmm. it was like, I felt like maybe they've came to an agreement. So then he poses, I got family coming into town, mm -hmm. you know, can you come out and meet my family? Right. And she's like, I don't think we're ready for that. Yeah. And he's like, well, what are we ready for? Right. You know? Cause she was like, he's like, are we together? Uh, you know, like, who are you choose? There's no one else to choose. So why are we trying to make a decision on choices? Right. Either you're going to want to be with him. Or you're not. Or you're not going to want to be with him. You know, mm -hmm. so I think it would have been good for him to just say, you know what? I'm really not finding anybody um, that I want to date here. Right. But she just tells him no. <laughs> and he's like. Okay. okay. <laughs> you don't want to meet my family? Gotcha. All righty then. Um, so then Paul and his brother meet with Dakia. Mm -hmm. I think it was his younger brother, right? Yes, he was the oldest. So, um, and so the brother kind of takes the, the lead as far as asking questions, getting mm -hmm. to know Dakia. Um, and he asked some great questions, has some good follow up questions, mm -hmm. things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Um, but the, at the end of the conversation and, and she, of course, you know, the key passed with flying colors as far as mm -hmm. the conversation at the end though, 
Paul's brother basically was like, she gave some textbook answers. They were good, mm -hmm. but they're kind of the, in some respects, the answers that you would expect someone to say. Which kind of goes to your point again about how um, your question, you know, the question of whether or not she's really feeling Paul. Mm -hmm. So, well, I think also is that you have to think of, you have to look at people's careers. Mm -hmm. She is a, she's an engineer. She's a system engineer for NASA. So I don't, you, it's going to be polished. I'm, That's true. I'm sorry. That's true. Based off of what she does for a living and she's very intellectual it's going to be polished right. uh the question is again it's just like is she really feeling him that mm -hmm. way you know um so i don't know you know even paul says that my brother you know kind of really doesn't hasn't got a chance to really get to know the key and kind of mm -hmm. you know because she is she's like she is all business when it comes to everything in her life. And then being able to see her just kind of relax and right. take everything off. It takes a moment. Yeah. So, but I think overall, is it fun? And I think that's what the brother was trying to see. If there right. was a connection between them. Because Paul, Paul, Paul is, when, and here's the thing. When we first met Paul, we didn't expect Paul to last this long. I'm gonna be real honest. We were looking at Paul like I, if mm -hmm. I put money in Vegas, I would have lost, lost on Paul. Um, but Paul has been sticking around. But yeah, Paul, Paul is. I think he's there's some cerebral there. He's very, he's a thinker. Oh, he's a he's, he's but he's strategic. also but he's also a, a creative in some respects, right? Mm -hmm. So it's a matter of do they really connect, right? That's the question. I, I think, think that's I think that's the main question, right? Mm -hmm. Because I think he can be what, and this is not in a bad way, a chameleon. Yes. So as he went along and he saw things he needed to tweak, he was able to tweak it. He's able to make those adjustments. He's able to make those adjustments. Yes. And so when he wants to decide, okay, I do. And he's very intentional about like, I do want to find love. I do want to take my time with it mm -hmm. and really interact to find out where I am. Right. You know, so I can give him credit for that. Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't deny that. I just think, I think the journey just ends. Yeah. And it's okay in that. Well, but we'll get into our predictions. Okay. Another video. We'll do another. All right. We'll have another video, y'all, of our predictions of okay. what happens at the at things. We did forget to mention also Cliff and Joy met at the beginning of the episode. Oh, and they did. Um, met with his uncle and his cousin. Correct. Um, and they love Joy. Joy, you know, great connection. The, right. The problem, or not the problem, but the, the challenge. potential challenge, there you go, um, for them is that she's about to go back to Mexico to uh, for her career. So she's a mm -hmm. singer. So she's probably down in one of those uh, all-inclusive all resorts. Yeah, that's love. nice. Um, you know, entertaining, what have you. So mm -hmm. that's going to, of course, cause some challenges for mm -hmm. a relationship that really is just beginning because right. she's gone for six months. Right. And, and he's stuck in, in D.C. Right. And that's the question. Is he really stuck in D.C.? You know, does he work from is there home? Some remote? Mm -hmm. Is there a remote where he can spend some time there and is, that? Yeah. You know, because I get what she's saying. She's like, it's time for me to find love, but that means also deciding how you want your career to go. Right. If you really are saying you're ready for love, right. that means also you may have to be ready for a career change. Right. Or find something, you know, maybe Wiley and his band, his dad's go-go band. Hey. Needs another singer, right? I mean, there's different things that you can do, you know, but again, you have to, you have, it's a big leap. There's some, there's some, it's a big leap. You have to figure out what are you willing to do. Right. And in this instance, what are you willing to do and maybe give up. Right. Or change and adjust. Right. It's to, a compromise. To make those, the, what you, to get what you're saying you want. Right. Exactly. So. Exactly. Um, and then, so then all the guys meet up at the last fellas lounge with Tommy. Mm -hmm. um, and of course they're recapping where things are mm -hmm. um basically tommy does say to demetrius all right you need some you need some clarity she didn't want to meet your your family so you need to figure out exactly what this looks like what is going on mm -hmm. um 
because he's like, I gave that assignment for a reason, for a purpose, for you guys to figure some of these things out mm -hmm. and have that, those conversations. Mm -hmm. um, and so he also says that, you know, before he heads out, that there is, you know, one last turn up of the heat mm -hmm. that he's got coming next week. So, mm -hmm. um, and then he leaves out and he's like, Paul, don't be lying. Is your connection real? Or is it just for the last minute? So Right. And again, because this is, this is what I'm saying. It's not just that. It's like, okay, I, if Uncle Tom, like, I'm looking at this like, this might not be, because why, why is it, why is it so late? Right. Why is it so late? Yeah. And granted, whoever you wanted to go after, you went after and found out that they weren't a good connection. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's on Paul because he was looking for a certain type. Mm-hmm. And then he needed something different, right. and now he found it. Or again, it's just not, it's just not here. So. Yep. So we'll see. Uh, so then Sabrina and Demetrius they do meet again. Mm -hmm. Um, and she kind of starts off talking about that you know as far as the meeting with the family, um, for her that's a huge step. Mm -hmm. Um, she's like you know she said her basically her dad doesn't want to meet any guy unless he's asking to put a ring on it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I get that in a normal situation, normal circumstance, but like we said, in this environment, in this situation, it's not, it, it, no one's obligating y'all to get married. It right. is just maybe get some insight and also maybe, maybe the, the because you had, the, you know, with the previous relationship, maybe uh, your parents or your family's input or, or insight might be the thing that helps you to make a decision also. And a lot of times, granted, I don't want my kids just to be bringing random people every time I turn around. No. But I would like to meet them be, be, before you ask for the hand in marriage, too. Because maybe we need to navigate, like, um, he's come over a couple times and I'm seeing certain things. Have you noticed this? Right. Is this a red flag for you? Right. It's a red flag for me. And that'll give, you know, my children an opportunity to see... If this is something a deal breaker for them, right. then wait until he come asking for a hand or whatever. Or she come asking for a hand. Yeah. And I'm just supposed to say yes. or like, I don't know you. Right. So. Especially because the way we, you know, we, we operate as far as family, right? <laughs> um, my mom views you as her daughter. And that's kind of how we want to view our kids when, whenever they bring somebody around <sighs> is that they come in to the family. Right. So. I want to kind of know who's coming into the family before I'm before we standing up at an altar somewhere. Right. I got to know. I mean, yeah. So I hear what she's saying, but I think she should take view. Maybe that's not always a good situation mm -hmm. because now you're divorced. I'm just saying. Yeah. Um. So, but they have this conversation and, and she does basically say he's not her person. Right. And <laughs> and he's looking like what? The deacon was like, "We about to have all my prayer meeting." He was like, "I spent all this time had you as my top connection, mm -hmm. and I didn't see all the things I should have been seeing, or I was ignoring things I shouldn't have been ignoring." Mm -hmm. And I'm like, "Pretty much, dude. Pretty much." Mm -hmm. Um, I think. When you come to the, especially in this space, I don't know if there was any other connections. Because, again, he was standoffish a little bit at the beginning as well. Right. right. And he was allowing women to come to him. Right. Whatever. And so, I think you there has to be a quicker opportunity for you to either say, okay, things are just not working. Right. There's no one here for me. You know, I think he had talked to Tina and whatever. That didn't really work out. But it's just like, we are trying to make people, allow people to make choices. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, when no one can make a choice, you still make, you still made a choice. Right. A lack you, of a decision is still a decision. It's still a decision. Yeah. And so it's funny how he is really taken back that it was just like, so we've been through all of this to go nowhere. Because basically it was like, you know if you're gone, I'm gone. Pretty much. If your journey ends, my journey's over now too. Exactly. Um, and so they hug and, and leave. But yeah, so 
Um, we are now down to three potential couples. Mm-hmm. We're down to Cliff and Joy, mm-hmm. uh, Paul and Dakia, mm-hmm. and Carmen and Donovan. Mm-hmm. Um, so next week, it looks like they, uh, Tommy is sending them where the guys meet their the ladies' families, mm-hmm. um, which is going to looks like there's some interesting things happening with Donovan and mm-hmm. Carmen's family because he has to talk about his infidelity. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's interesting there, and then we'll just kind of see the rest of it. Um, and then they're making their decision. So mm-hmm. um, it's going to be interesting. We're, we're coming to the end of this round of Ready to Love. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, y'all know Reunion. Mm-hmm. Reunion is going to be interesting as mm-hmm. always. Um, so I think that's it for yeah. this one. That's it for this recap. We will see you all next time. Have a great one. Be blessed. Bye.